Welcome back to my channel. My name is Nancy, for those of you who don't know me. And I'm an entomologist, which means that I study bugs, and I live in Ecuador. So today, I want to just get something off my chest, and we're going to talk about a thing that really annoys me, which is why we have the war paint on today. So that thing is when elitist entomologists get mad or comment that science communicators and insect advocates, I would say, are using the word bug incorrectly. I'm going to tell all of you how I use the word bug before I go off on these elitist entomologists, so that way we are all on the same page. I use the word bug to include a swash of terrestrial arthropods, which include insects, which includes arachnids, spiders, and scorpions, ticks, and mites, which includes things called myriapods, which are your centipedes and your millipedes, and also would include isopods, which are your sow bugs, pill bugs, and roly polies. Now you can see why I would might want a term that includes all of those things that is fun and easily accessible and is a word that people have in their vocabulary. Yes. I could sit here and say terrestrial arthropod every time I wanted to talk about that swash of animals, but I would much rather use the word bug. It's more fun. You guys know what I mean. You know, like it's just, it just is a word that makes sense and I feel helps me come across as more approachable and I feel is easier to just say than terrestrial arthropod every single, I mean, imagine if my username wasn't cybugs and was side terrestrial arthropods. This is how the dictionary also defines the word bug because it's just how we happen to use it in the language. If you also go to the dictionary, it will say that there is an entomological version of the word bug, but for most people, like that's what bug means. So I don't even feel like I'm using the term incorrectly as a lot of entomologists might say I am. So what might you be asking are entomologists using bug to mean? Well, to entomologists, all bugs are insects, but not all insects are bugs. Bugs belong to a very specific group, which we are going to go over right now. What is a true bug, you might ask, or what is the entomological definition of a bug? And a bug is a certain group was in the order Hemiptera. So let's start there. A hemipteran has a piercing, sucking mouth part called a hemipteran beak, and it is evolutionary derived. It's special to this group. This is how we determine that hemipterans are hemipterans. Hemipterans are things like stink bugs, they're things like cicadas, they're things like plant hoppers. Hemiptera encompasses all of those things. Hemiptera also means half wing. And that's probably because originally it was referring to the group Heteroptera, which has now been demoted to a suborder. But the group Heteroptera is what we call true bugs. Heteroptera are characterized not only by that hemipteran beak, but they are also characterized by the type of wing that's half hardened in the front and still membranous in the back. Heteroptera means different wing, and that wing type of being half membranous and half hardened is called a hemi-elytra, which means half elytra, and elytra are their shells you find on beetles. You see why we use the word bug colloquially? Like, how hard would it be to get through this every single time? <laughs> this group is what we call the true bugs. This includes things like stink bugs, this includes things like bed bugs, this includes things like assassin bugs. This is why all bugs are insects, but not all insects are bugs. Because not all insects fall into this small group of heteroptera or different winged insects. And you can tell as an entomologist or as someone who's just reading the literature, the difference between a true bug and anything else we might call a bug that isn't. For example, ladybugs are not bugs, they're beetles. And you can tell that by the way their name is written. Ladybug is written as one word all smashed together. And that is because when the bug and whatever it's modifying are smashed together, it means that it's just a colloquial term and it's not a true bug. If the word is written out like stink 
bug as two separate words, then you can tell that that is a true bug. This is true for other types of insects as well. Like a bee fly is written as two separate words, so you know it's a true fly versus something like a butterfly where the word is smashed together or a dragonfly where the word is smashed together. Neither butterflies nor dragonflies are true flies, and so the word is smashed together. So there you have it. That's what entomologists mean when they say the word bug. It is a it's very it's a very specific group of insects called Heteroptera within the order Hemiptera. And so that's why entomologists get mad when insect educators like me or other people use the word bug colloquially. It's interesting that entomologists settled on the word bug referring to this specific group of Hemipterans because that the word bug has a couple different possibilities of where it came from. One of them is the old English word. I have no idea how to pronounce it because I am not old English, but, it, but it's on screen. Anyway, this old word meant scary, creepy, crawly thing, and that's, where, that's one of the origins that we believe the word bug comes from. There are a couple other ideas, but they all basically stem from something that is creepy or a ghost or a phantom or scary in some way. So bug just means like scary, which I, I don't think they're scary. Please love my, my beautiful arthropods. Please love them. So then moving along into the 1600s, this is when we've started to take the word bug and kind of nail down a meaning. We think that it was originally talking about bed bugs, which are in fact actually a type of true bug that you would see. They are in the group Heteroptera, even though they've lost their wings and had some other things happen. Evolution is complicated, but we'll talk about that in another video. Bug also has the history of meeting beetles. So if you even want to go on that definition, then you say, well, bug used to mean beetles. Didn't, didn't just mean bed bugs, but I can see why that happened because bed bugs and beetles can look kind of similar if you don't know what you're looking at. Bug, the R word for it, has always kind of been in vocabulary for a long time, signifying something that was scary or, or gross or a creepy crawly. And then it wasn't until like the 1600s did we start associating the word bug to very specifically mean bed bugs. And it wasn't until later that entomologists used that term to refer to a very specific grouping of insects. So why even bother talking about this? Is it a big deal? No, I guess in the grand scheme it's not. But I just, I feel like this has larger implications. I feel like it's a form of gatekeeping, right? You have some elitist entomologist who's talking to maybe a newbie or someone who's just found newfound interest and they're like, oh, I want to get some bugs or whatever. And then an entomologist would be like, oh, a bug, huh? You know, <laughs> you know I feel like it's just one, kind of rude and two, really discourages people who may be just entering entomology, either as someone who might want to study entomology or someone as a hobbyist. And I feel like it just really, I don't know, it gets so easy to deflate people when they're new because they know they're new and it takes a lot of self-confidence and it takes a lot to just be like, hey, I kind of want to learn about this. You know, you're putting yourself out there and to have that feeling immediately squashed by someone who's like, well, yes, but you aren't quite on my level yet. You know, it just comes across as very elitist and gatekeeping. And I know like a, it's not an entomology specific thing. For example, there's like anime and video games and any kind of, you know, niche interest I feel like has those gatekeepers who are like, I've been here since the beginning, and don't you remember what this character did in season one of episode two? Yes, it was a side character, but you don't know it? Ha, you're not a true fan. You know, and that kind of attitude, whether it's whatever it is, whether it's everything from cosplay to video games to science, I think has the same effect where people who could be really interested, people who could be really great for that field or for that interest area, are then discouraged because of the attitudes of people who are like, I did the time, I learned all the things. And it just, <laughs> maybe that's not what all entomologists sound like, but it, it, to me, it, it's really, if anything, it damages our reputation, it makes us all look like elitist jerks, and I think it could really dissuade people from getting into entomology who otherwise, I think, should be in entomology. That being said, I will, of course, use the word that I think 
is most appropriate for the audience. If I'm on YouTube, if I'm doing a podcast, if I'm in a Facebook group that's just generalist entomologists or entomology hobbyists, I'm going to use the word bug because again, I want to connect with you guys. If I am talking to a room of entomologists or I'm talking to entomology students who are like, you know, knee deep in entomology by that point, I will use the word bug to refer to these heteropterans. And that makes sense because you always tailor your language to the group that you're talking to so that way you can draw them in and get them interested in something that you love. So I hope that today's video, even though it was a little bit short and a little bit ranty, you know, showed you some of the inner workings of entomology and how many specific terms we have for all of these things. And I hope you can see like my, why I choose to use the word bug. And if you are one of those entomologists who have in the past been like, ah, oh, you used the word bug incorrectly. Um, like no shade, really, I get it. But maybe, maybe if you want to connect with people, a little bit more, maybe that's, maybe that's not the, the best way to do it. All right, everybody, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate all of you friends. I am uploading every single week now. I know, so proud. Huh? I'm trying to do a little bit more content that's not just straight up like learning about bugs all the time, but a little bit more entertaining. So I guess let me know if you thought this was entertaining. Don't forget to subscribe and like, and I don't know, if you think I'm wrong, feel free to leave me a comment about how wrong I am. That's totally fine. So I will see you all next week, and I really appreciate you all being here. Bye.